Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another Rune Terror video and I thought I'd do a guide on one of the newest decks coming from the new expansion, the Bandle City expansion, and that is Discard Scion, a new discard archetype. I have played this deck the most. I have played hundreds of games with this deck so far this season and I've hit rank 1 with it uh, I think 6 times in total. I've hit rank 1 and currently I'm sitting at rank 4. Try to go to rank 1 today but it just wasn't to be and you can see rank 1's a little far away now. 80 points, is that it? 80 points, that's about... It's about seven wins away. You've got to win seven in a row and it's a lot harder than it sounds because you lose more points than you gain when you're this high up on the ladder. But we're currently sitting at rank four. In fact, I may have been overtaken. I haven't refreshed in a while. Still rank four. And wow, Nick's all the way up to 375 now. He's played another one. He keeps going. Yeah, maybe he's going all the way to 400. But let's quickly take a look at the deck, and then I'll quickly showcase some games. Just in normals, I want to show a, a few things, um, but I don't want to play in ranked right now. Um, but <clears throat> when I'm talking about the, this is the list, and you, you've probably seen the list already. But the main thing I want to talk about is what cards you want to keep in your hand, or what cards you are looking for, um, and not talk about every individual card. Uh, but the first thing that we'll talk about is what cards to keep and basically I'm gonna keep it very general very general because it's hard to talk about every single matchup but The general thing is you're looking for one discard card and one discard fodder card So the discard cards are Poro Cannon, Zornite Urchant, which are the two best and then the other one would be Grave Physician There's also Sump Dredger, but I would never keep Sump Dredger and then the discard fodder cards, the two best ones are Fallen Rider, which is pre even so you can play the Risen Rider on turn two. And then the other one is Lost Soul. Uh, and then finally, there's also Reborn Granadier, but this one is pretty good. You can use this early, like turn one, if you're attacking on turn one to push a lot of damage. But it's also very good as a burst blocker late in the game. So I wouldn't say it's as good as a discard fodder card as Fallen Rider and Lost Soul, but it's still there as well. And then the other one's survival skills, but you never want survival skills. You're not going to be using survival skills turn one or two, so you'd rather just draw into it. Um, however, let's talk about a few specific matchups. If you're playing against I'm going to say a uh, quick attack deck. So you're playing against another Draven, so the mirror match. Uh, it's uh, the mirror match, for example, or you're playing against Zed, Caitlyn, you know, all the quick attack champions. Survival skills is a potential keep. If you've got a decent hand already, you can definitely keep survival skills. If your ha hand is looking pretty bad, then you might want to hard get rid of everything to at least get, uh, you know, some decent cards. Then the other thing to talk about is you always keep Draven every single time you always keep Draven and the other card is Boom Baboon I would say 90% of the time you're keeping Boom Baboon as well because he's a card that you can just play on turn 2 and you don't need to discard anything so generally Draven and Boom Baboon are always keeps uh, then the final thing is Scion I will only keep in the mirror match <coughs> I've been keeping it in in the mirror match, and it's been doing me a good. It's been doing well for me. So, but every other matchup, I don't keep Scion. My list is pretty stock standard, I would say, with the only big difference being, I guess, the controversial pick that I have in my list is Fallen Reckoner. I think this this card has won me so many games. I don't think it's. You don't have to run this card, but I think it has won me so many games, specifically matchups against Bandle City decks that run Mini Morph, where you can't win the game with Scion because he's just going to get Mini Morphed. And in the end, Fallen Reckoner can come in clutch with, you know, he can be the win condition. And he's the alternate win condition instead of Scion. And sometimes you don't draw Scion, Fallen Reckoner can come in really clutch. Fallen Reckoner is 100% better than Ancient Warmonger. I think this card is a bait. I think you should never run this card and you should definitely run Fallen Reckoner over this card so don't. I haven't actually played with this card you can see I haven't unlocked it yet but I know this card is just kind of trash. I wouldn't run any of these. I've played against it. It's not good. You know you want to hit the strongest ally and you want it to always be Draven but in this deck a lot of the times your strongest ally is not Draven because your Sump Dredger has 4 attack 
and your you know risen risen rider also has full four attack so i think this card is a bit of a bait don't run this card and i think most people in masters have already cut this card however in masters there's a deck going around where a lot of people run an arachnoid sentry they run like two of these and then two, uh, you know one more flock two flocks and this card is very good in the mirror match. I will definitely give it that. However, I think this card is not that great in most other matchups. I think for the ladder, you really... I, I don't think you need to be playing this card. But if you specifically want to counter the mirror match... So I don't think Arachnoid Sentry is a bad card to play right now. If you can definitely try it out for yourself. Um, but it is a reactive card, and 90% of the time you want to be proactive with this deck. So, you know, it's one of the few reactive cards, and in some matchups you can just draw it and it's kind of a dead card. So, I might try it uh, here and there, but um, I'm not going to run it at this point in time. I much prefer the Fallen Reckoner, which I think is much better. Okay, let's hop into a game very quickly. I just want to show you specifically the mulligan and let's see if we can get this out. Okay, there's our deck. So, like I said, we're looking for one discard card and one discard fodder card and you can see we've got both of those already. Now, uh, we're playing against a Teemo deck, so Poro Cannon is actually better than Zornite Urchin and I don't think we want to keep both discard cards. We can rather look for uh, Draven instead. So this is what I would do. I'd keep the one discard card and the one discard follow card. And in this matchup, Poro Cannon is slightly better than Urchin, obviously, because he's running Teemo. And then we get the Boom Baboon, which we can play on two as well, but we're probably going to... Okay, so this looks like it's going to be an aggro burn list. Unfortunately, we can't block, but <clears throat> he got the fearsome blocker. But it's anything that we had turn one would not fix this here. Okay, so in this spot, we could go for the double one drop, or we can just play the two drop. Now, he might have a triple one drop opener. Um, but I think we just play the Risen Rider. I'm not, I'm guessing this is a burn deck. Okay, maybe it's not anymore. I don't know. We can play Draven here. Depends what he plays. So against this deck... Okay, we uh, actually think we might go for... I think we're trying to stay alive here. So I'm going to go for uh, Zornite Urchin. I'm going to go for Boobaboon and Zornite Urchin and discard the Flame Chompers. Okay, well, he's got two fearsome blockers, and uh, there's not much we can do about that. Now, we can top deck a Reborn Grenadier, because we do have the second Poro Cannon. So that can be a burst blocker if we get it, we don't get it. So we're just trying to stay alive here. The thing is, we block like this, we take 15, go down to 15, 14. This actually saves the most HP. So now we probably just play Draven and maybe a Poro as well. I have the best job. Let's make a deal. Got okay. Well, uh, I don't think we go for the level up on Draven here. No We're just staying alive. We got to play this as well. Explosive. Oh wow, he's got everything. He's just got everything. <clears throat> They're just full block. Uh, we don't want to take any damage. Keeps his units alive. Now we play the Boom Baboon and uh, I'm going to keep our board as wide as possible so we can block everything. Now we could go uh, Rummage or we can just build our board again. Might just have to rummage the axes. Let's go for rummage here. Survival skills. Um, so the thing is, we can uh, we can challenge. Uh, but what do we discard? Probably just this, and then we kill this. 
And if he's got some sort of burn to kill Draven, our survival skills will work on Draven. So this is pretty important with this deck, is knowing... Knowing what survival skills is going to hit, because it doesn't always hit Dra Draven, it hits the strongest ally. And a lot of the time you've got the Risen Rider, which is stronger than Draven. You've also got Sump Dredger. There's a lot of cards that are stronger than Draven, so you've got to be careful of that. We've got no more units to play. He's got his Teemo. Wow. Okay. Um... So what we do is we first axe Draven. Which will keep this alive. Then we probably... Go like this. Like this. And that gets rid of... Dr we lose Draven if we do that. Um, we might just do this first and see what he does. Okay. So we could play second Draven, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, we don't have to go for the Whirling Death, we can just play second Draven. The party has <laughs> and then we can draw. Now we haven't drawn Scion, Scion will basically be an instant win. Unfortunately our hand's looking kind of scuffed right now. Okay, now it's looking a lot better. <laughs> the Lost Soul for Challenger. And this game is looking pretty much over. He's running out of steam. So if we do this, is this lethal? It is lethal. <clears throat> now, unfortunately... So... <clears throat> survival skills, when it does the strongest ally, it does power first. But all three of these are power. And then it does health. But all three of these have the same health. But then, finally, it's cost. So survival skills would only work on this. Um... And just to prove that, I might just do it now, to be honest. Okay, never mind. I just wanted to show you uh, that it works like that, that the Twin Blade Revenant was going to get the survival skills. Okay, so let me show... Okay, now we're going to play against a more common deck that you see, and that is a uh, Caitlyn Teemo, and hopefully uh, we get to... Okay, so here we go. We're playing against Teemo, so once again, Poro Cannon is perfect. Now... The thing is, we've got Lost Soul, but we've also got Reborn Granadier. And we can smoke pretty hard with Reborn Granadier turn 1. Um, but, do we keep the Lost Soul? So the choice here is, do we keep Reborn Granadier or we keep Lost Soul? And I think in this matchup, we actually want to aggro him down. And because we're attacking on turn 1, we want to keep Reborn uh, Granadier. So I'm going to get rid of Lost Soul. If I was not attacking on turn 1, I would keep Lost Soul instead of the Reborn Granadier. And we just kind of smork here. And he can only play Teemo turn 1, which means, I mean, if he might be forced to block. He's not going to block. He's not going to block. So we get a free 4 damage in here, no matter what. He might block if he's got a second Teemo, but he knows we've got a second Daring Poro. And there we go. And he plays his Teemo, but this is the old... Basically, uh, Poro Cannon versus Teemo Dex uh, is an auto win. It's an auto win. So you can consider hard searching for Poro Cannon, but luckily we did get it off the bat. Uh, now, this is interesting. Uh, if we play Poro Cannon... Uh, if we play Daring Poro, you can just block with this. We'll probably just go with the discard on the Rummage. Now, you could discard survival skills, but I think uh, Rummage is just a little bit better at this situation. Yeah, we got blocks for both of his attacks, and this is a perfect spot for us. He's going to just trade. Now, another thing to be careful is when you play against the Frail Yord version, they're going to have a lot of uh, freezes and buffs and that sort of thing. So you actually don't want to attack with the Daring Poro, it's better to just wait and block. If he's got mana. If he's got mana, you don't want to attack because he's going to trade uh, with a potential freeze or a buff the Teemo, and then you lose your blocker, and then Teemo gets a free strike next turn. So we just attack with Draven here. We just attack with Draven here. Um, now we can discard to get uh, level up progression, but we've got nothing to discard at this point. So... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have the two axes in hand instead and then we could potentially go for a double level up uh, I mean a double you know double axe next time for an instant level up 
So if he was to... Okay, see, he's gonna kill that, and then I imagine... He might have something for this one as well. So we'll just play it and force it out. So he does. So he's used a lot of mana on our one, uh, one mana Poros. Uh, there's not much we can do about it right now. We can go wide with, uh, so we can go wide with both Boom Baboon and Zornite Urchin to draw and maybe potentially draw into another Poro Cannon. We get a second Draven. Uh, Lost Soul, pretty good top deck. Now we've got to keep in mind that when we play the Sump Dredger, it will, uh, survival skills will now activate on will now activate on we draw draw one shroom they will now activate on the sump dredger instead of draven so always keep that in mind uh now we can do this to maximize our damage and honestly it's probably the best play and uh, he's basically forced to block with teemo unless he wants to go down to four so he gets the brittle still and he is going to block with teemo no, he decides against it. So we may as well get the strike with Draven. Time for the money maker. I don't want to discard survival skills because, of course, survival skills will be fantastic against Caitlyn because, like I said, Caitlyn's got quick attack and survival skills is perfect against quick attack units. And we've basically got uh, Sion. He's going to level up as soon as we play him. And there's the Poro Cannon, so unless he open attacks... Okay, he will open attack. And we're gonna get a lot of shrooms in our deck here, and he might actually one-shot us... Uh, with the Karina, because Karina's quite busted. Not going to lie. However, if he attacks with both... And if he attacks with Chump Wump as well here, then we get a free Whirling Death onto his Teemo. Assume he doesn't. Be a misplay to attack with uh, both of them. Oh, he nearly misplayed. Uh, so yeah, we're going to have a lot of shrooms in the deck. But, okay, we got to be scared of Karina. Now, can Karina one-shot us with shrooms? It could be pretty close. It could be pretty close, and we got to consider, do we play... <clears throat> do we play Psy on this turn? Is there a punish? Now, there is freezes. He could freeze our Psy on. It potentially is a punish. Now, if we swing like this... Um... But let's just play Sion because he's got a cool level up. <laughs> I think we're going to win this, but he might. If he drops Karina, he's dead. If he's got the freeze guy, he might uh, survive. Hot on the trail. Okay, so I think he must be pretty much dead here. He needs a bunch of freezes. He could survive with a bunch of freezes here. And he's not going to survive. So, he, he could have had Ice Veil Archer, which is a good uh, punish for me going for the Scion there. Um, but he didn't have it. I guess one final thing I should talk about is how to play specific matchups. Like you saw against Teemo Caitlyn, Poro Cannon. You can honestly just hard mulligan for Poro Cannon. And, uh, you know, if you get Poro Cannon, you win the game, basically. Um, the next thing is the mirror match, like I and spoke about, is uh, you want to keep Scion, and survival skills is pretty good as well. But how do you win the mirror match? It all comes down to the challenges. So if you're attacking on turn 7, and you play Scion, and he plays Scion, if you've got Flame Chompers, you hook his Scion, so he can't block with he can't block your sign with his sign and uh, you just hook his sign with uh, flame chompers and you get a free hit in with scion uh, and his sign takes no damage the other challenger is uh no not this the other challenger is the twin blade revenant it's not as good to hook sign with uh because obviously it does damage to the enemy scion and uh 
and then he can just use a mystic shot or get excited or a flock to get to the rally himself on that turn so basically that matchup comes down to the challenges now if both players have challenges then it comes down to who is the attack token and uh if so if you're attacking on turn seven you probably win the game now obviously there's some other other aspects of the game like how much hp you're on how much hp he is on but generally that is like the general guide it comes down to the challenges and if you've got the challenges you want the attack token the other matchup zoe nami you just lose uh i'm sorry <laughs> you just lose uh even if you draw poro cannons or whatever they just heal too much with spark fly the new version of zoe nami you just lose this is the the new version that people are running on the na ladder uh where you've got uh, the triple nami triple flurry but you're playing gifts from beyond and to get out your spark fly and the key with this deck is you pass turn one and two you don't play Zoe on turn one, you don't play anything on turn two, and then you play Double Trouble on turn three, and you just hard look for Nami and uh, Shelly, and uh, Cyan can't beat that deck, at, uh, no, no matter what happens, uh, unless they don't draw, uh, unless they don't draw Nami, then you can win, but they probably, they're going to be hard looking for Nami, and you just lose if they've got Nami. Uh, the other matchup we'll talk about, there's a new Yordle Smith uh, Poppy Lulu Rally deck, and survival skills can be clutched in that deck as well. You can also keep Mystic Shot to get rid of their Yordle Smith. Basically, Yordle Smith is what wins them the game. And if you don't, uh, if you don't get rid of their Yordle Smith, you, it can make it a little bit harder because everything gets quick attack. Um, so you know, if you can get rid of their Yordle Smith as well as their Poppy, Lulu's not that much of a threat, but Poppy and Yordle Smith. It's a winning matchup. You should be able to win that matchup, but they can still, you know, they can still win it uh, as well. But it's usually winner winnable against darkness. Uh, against darkness, fallen reckoner is probably your key because they're gonna just mini morph your scion. So I would keep uh, fallen reckoner against darkness. And similar thing to Bandle Tree, they play a bunch of blockers. You know, they just spam blockers with all their units, Maya. Uh, the cheap cards they have, they spam a bunch of blockers, but Fallen Reckoner can be used to get rid of their blockers, and that's how you win the game. You can also consider teching in a uh, Scorched Earth uh, to get rid of their Bandle Tree. Um, also, if you're coming against, coming up against Thrall, Scorched Earth can uh, be used obviously on their thralls and scorched earth is not always a dead card because you can use it on your own scion to get a rally if he has been damaged so it's not the worst card to tech in uh, so if you're coming up against a lot of those landmark type of decks you can definitely consider running a, a one of scorched earth i wouldn't run more than one though because it can be a pretty dead card in some matchups some other decks you come up against a lot uh Ziggs to Leah, you just try and do as much damage as possible early and you should win that matchup. Uh, and then the other one is Akshan Siva, you win that matchup as well. That's one of your best matchups. Aurelia Zia, one of your best matchups. Unfortunately, those two decks have been nerfed and so you're going to be seeing them a lot less. But those, those matchups are fairly easy. You generally just beat them before they beat you. And they don't really have a way to deal with Scion. And that is pretty much it in terms of matchups. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the guide. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, have a nice day.